So uh, the mission of the United States Air Force is to win in airspace and cyberspace. And that takes energy, both of operational, jet fuel kind, and it takes electrons in the facility side. So in 2016, the United States Air Force, by the magic of a pen, stood up the uh, Office of Energy Assurance. And so we've been around, I've been here a little over 14 months to stand up this office to focus on our highest priority now is providing energy security to our mission and to our, to our missions. Mission assurance through energy assurance. And that is the primary reason that we exist. And the Air Force changed its focus a little bit. I mean, presidential directives, executive orders, and, and all the goals that were already in place, we were focused on renewables for the obvious reasons, because we needed to drive in that behavior. But it didn't necessarily focus on building a system that focused on delivering energy assurance. So the resiliency term comes out. I like how we talk about, everybody does talk about resiliency. We started talking about it probably seven years ago, uh, mostly on the mental health of our, our military members coming home and adapting back to society. So there's resiliency. I watch a lot of college football. I hear resiliency at least 50 times on Saturday. But our resiliency is what is it gonna take to, to develop a system on the installation that is gonna give us a reliability and the ability to recover quickly and adapt so that we can execute the missions that our, that our nation is asking us to do. So that the purpose of the OEA, to come in here and focus on that. And uh, thanks to the Army, we were able to leverage some of their knowledge and experience of, of more success in some of those larger renewable projects on installations. Uh, we got to share office space, we still do. We get to leverage, leverage their corporate knowledge, leverage their access to contractors, that bring us additional corporate knowledge and et cetera. So the Air, the Air Force's focus has changed. So the flight plan, if you've heard about the flight plan, that came out in January of 17 this year, and its priorities are um, improve resiliency, optimize demand, and assure supply. So, so there's, a, there's a color coding strategy that um, that the Army tends to brief and, and they have boxes over there of projects that are in operation and, and things like that. I don't have any of those. So that's our goal. That's our goal in uh, coming up in FY18 is we're gonna get projects that are awarded. And, and the ideal projects are a lot of things like Schofield Barracks. That's what we want. And one of the preferences from one of the perfect scenarios is a utility-owned asset, multi-fuel generation source, that we can bring in should we ever need it. If there's a grid outage and we're not reliable, or we can't rely on the commercial power side, that the generation is able to, in black star capability like on Schofield, to generate power for our Air Force base. At least at the level for our most critical facilities and our most critical missions. And then we will leave the decisions up to the commanders at the time to decide what that may be. So there's always a comment that says, well, housing is not your most critical, so you're not going to focus on that. Well, that box down there on the lower right-hand side, it says McDill Air Force Base in Tampa, Florida. I have had the privilege of being the base civil engineer for the last nine years before I got this opportunity. And I will tell you, after six hours in Tampa, Florida, if you don't have uh, power in the housing, it all of a sudden becomes a critical resource. <laughs> and there are two combatant commands. That come out of McDill Air Force Base and CENTCOM and SOCOM, and they are run by four stars and a lot of people that support them. And um, they are also run by Mrs. usually, four stars, and so you don't supply housing power in about six hours, you better find a new job as a base civil engineer. So I can't imagine, now they evacuated during the current storms, the most recent storms, but we've seen what, net, uh, what weather events will do. Now, McDill was in pretty good shape, they had improved their security and reliability by putting the systems underground. I used to say I had a microgrid, but my advanced control systems were, you go turn that switch and turn it over that way. So the timing wasn't necessarily quick. So the microgrid description of what it's evolved into has kind of changed in, in what we're doing. Far more sophisticated today. Uh, we have two projects that are currently in design, one at Joint Base Cape Cod, Massachusetts, and one also in Hawaii, to support the Air National Guard on Joint Base Pearl Hickam, so the former Air, uh, Hickam Airfield. We also are going after some of the grants that John had mentioned, 
California has some grant programs we're trying to develop uh, microgrids and also in Massachusetts we're, we're going after those grants to develop the microgrid and uh, on military installations some have also been developed through programs such as ESTCP which is an OSD funded program it's kind of like a grant where you bring in a new technology idea and uh, and try and win the funding for it and that's how Cape Cod was actually able to get theirs under design the piece that comes after design is controls <coughs> and controls is what scares everybody and it's not just because your personal data can now be stolen from Target or any of the other places that have lost it uh, it's because we fear the cyber hacker so um, so we're very we're, we're a little bit more methodical to go after that authority to operate and put it on a government network system so uh, you have to design those those enhancements and that security after you've designed what your control system is going to look like so we can't get the cart before the horse and we don't have too many but probably 75% of those boxes if we execute all those uh, projects will have some semblance of a microgrid in place to ensure supply to those installations and then the last thing is about partnerships and teamwork so we know we have to collaborate so opportunities like this to come and talk are great to start to continue to open a dialogue we're parts of communities we're not necessarily isolated anymore we do have a few of those boxes on that chart that have less community support around them than others um, but we know that we know that that is only going to strengthen this and, and relationships with industry with utility companies with the ASCOs that do the ESBCs that were mentioned here a little earlier uh, we also are staffed with we have labs we have the national the FFRDCs uh, and the labs that are partnered to bring us that, that corporate knowledge that technical experience that support both the staff with the offices uh, the Army's Office of Energy Initiatives and the Air Force's Office of Energy Assurance and so with that I believe I leave you with contact information or I go to your that's mine I can't see it thanks <laughs>